We're just about to finish up the bearing walls. Yes, we got the uh, gable walls done and we've extended the poles to the height of the trusses. And the trusses have just arrived. They just leave the tractor and trailer here. And uh, they're 80 footers and they're 312 pitch. We'll lay all the uh, trusses out on the top cord, two foot on center ahead of time, just like you can see I got started. That'll save chalk and any lines and keep all the purlins on the roof two foot on center. We just nail them down flat. The trusses are four foot on center, so there's not much span there. They can go on flat and you don't have to put the uh, ties in. We just uh, use the hurricane straps on the truss itself to the wall. Well, we've A-braced the one side uh, bearing wall and the one gable end bearing, or not bearing wall, but the one gable end wall, which we're going to start with our 80-foot truss. This, you have to put these A-braces on and two by sixes and brace them like four different places or uh, these big trusses like this will move with any type of wind. Same way on the side wall. We'll just match our side. We bring a string up on the top and uh, we have it perfectly straight. And then we'll just, the other wall, we only have a brace every 16 feet on it. And what we'll do is we'll pull that wall in and out and just nail it with the edge of this bearing wall. Uh, we just put a brace every 16 feet just to take the shake out of it for the guy up there. And uh, we'll just pull the wall in and out with the truss, just even it up and nail it off since we know the other wall is perfectly straight. And then we put about 12 rows of stringers in these trusses as we set them. So that's why all the, uh, right on our lift basket over there, we have all a bunch of four foot boards cut and ready to go. There'll be a guy on that that does nothing but just nail those on the bottom as we set and, and hand them up to the other guys. Well, we've got to set the trusses. We're bracing them in about 15 different places. If you don't do this, uh, you're risking uh, death. You have to have your gable truss uh, really, really braced well with the A bracing like we have at every pole. Then what we're doing is stringing off that since we have a good solid base to go off of. Then we're four foot on center and we're running like 12 uh, stringers aside. As we go, it takes more time, but it's well, well worth it. It uh, keeps the danger out of it. If uh, 80 footers bend and you don't bridge them, you've lost all its load capacity and you will go down with them. They'll collapse on you. They'll break right at the gussets. We've had to take a 30-foot pole from my uh, aluminum pole scaffolding and clamp it to the bottom cord of the truss to keep the bend out of it, or the truss would collapse if you uh, didn't brace it this way. You can see the clamps and the, uh, it's a four inch by four inch aluminum pole. I'll zoom in on it there. 
without that clamped on there, you'd never lift these without breaking one. I know on this video every day looks like the same day, but we've actually been on it eight days. And it's just gloomy and cold and crappy here in southern Ohio until March. About the time you're ready to shoot yourself, it gets nice. As we go, we put the diagonal storm bracing in in like four different spots. You can see we put a lot of stringers in on top and the bottom cord and in the webbing as we go. This keeps the shake out. If you don't do this, you know, you're, you're just risking a terrible danger. Then on the end that you've set everything from the gable end, you need to put this crow's foot bracing in it. You can see the diagonals down to the poles, then down to the A bracing on the wall. That keeps, keeps the everything going up straight and square and level. <laughs> 